Um, so rolling it. I get what I was thinking is it, it's probably easier for us to just sit out here because I got so many pennies in the of studio. Course. It's so full. Right. So I was thinking. Um, you want to bring them out? Yeah, and I'll yeah. put them up on the easel. We can just. No, that's a wonderful idea. Over. Trying to see how I can get so I'm not right in the sun. Can well, I move it to a chair over here? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Oh. I didn't realize how really worn out I was until I decided to take a few days off. Oh, you took yesterday off? I took off Saturday, yesterday, and today. Except going out and watering my clients' planters, you know. Yeah. But which is nothing. And that takes and, you. That must take you three or four hours. You know something? I have not been able to. I I, I I I let go so completely that I haven't been able to summon the energy to do much of anything. I meant to do a bunch of stuff around the house, and I've hardly picked, the, picked at it. I just don't care. We all need to take a break once in a while. Okay. I'm not a workaholic. Look at the maple. Wow. The black birch. Oh, nice. You get my uh, invitation? Yeah. Now, if someone made something like a chicken pot pie, but but used fish instead of chicken. You would be able to eat that, wouldn't you? Do you eat fish? Yeah. You eat fish? Yeah. Right. You know, I think, like a million years ago, when I used to go to potlucks at SGM in Portsmouth, I used to make this thing that was like a chicken pot pie, but but that I would I would put in little chunks of cooked fish instead of chicken. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, people like myself are pretty used to... Uh, well, if I can make something that everybody can eat, why not, you know? Yeah. And I have to ask Sandra and Carol about um, if I want to make like a crust like biscuits or something, what kind of flour I can use. Or, or can't use, whatever. Oh. These are really in the Oh, wow. Just three or four to begin, Kevin. Yeah. Not not too many at a time. I hear you. Four is okay. And they're all from different. I I, I can't do them chronologically because there is no no no. There is no, a sequence no. to them if you look at them chronologically. No. So you. No, I don't need that. I don't need that. I, I know what you're saying though. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Th wow. There's really too much glare on these rooms. Maybe we should turn and look that way. I don't shade. think it's too much glare. You don't? No. Yeah. Maybe on the white one, but, but I don't think so. You know, you never actually see paintings outdoors in this kind of light. <laughs> no. Yeah. Now, now, you know how one of the first things you start doing is reading stuff into it. Yeah. Which sure. is, narrative. Which, yeah, sure. narrative, which isn't necessary, of course, but... But that that one down there obviously is like uh, it's, it's like a barn and outbuilding and door openings and you can see the structure of the building and that there's stuff piled and stored inside of it and then of course you can see the great grove of trees to the right of it and behind it and, you know it's pretty you know it's self-explanatory it's sort of, sort of like self-explanatory yeah. you know right it's like it's, it's like a landscape with building <laughs> yeah the top one the white one intrigues me really. Wow. I'm not sure I've ever seen you do anything um, so far above middle value, you know. Oh yeah, very yeah. high key. Yeah. 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 Which you'll see many, several more of them. It's delightful to look at. So, that, so these ones are, you, yeah, your abs observation about in that, I can see the building in that one. It's there. actually, it's actually that corner of the house over there. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, right. And right. a lot of times I don't hear. Well, oh well. So when I do these, though, I don't really look at the house. Yeah. I try to get a feeling. And this is the dormer up there. And a lot of times, um, when I'm working at night, Sandra's upstairs getting, going to bed, and the lights on up there. Oh well, so, yes, I can see the lighted window. Yeah. So right. I'm kind of fast. And then the trees over there. 
And then when the sky is just, it's like, it's unbelievable. I could never try to paint it realistically, but no, no, no. it's just such an, so those three things are Well, you might surprise thought. yourself what you could paint and not paint, you know. It's, yeah, you well, know. I was surprised that I did something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really like that a lot. I'm not used to looking at these with the sun shining on them. Well, there's a little I, shade there. You know. it, it actually, I wish I had that enhancement. Yeah. <laughs> now, what I'm seeing a little bit of white on the lower left and a little tiny bit of white on the middle and upper right, is that your background showing or is that applied? Can you, do you, um, do you usually remember? I paint the, usually I do paint over the gesso with right. a ground color. It's usually some like scum that I had left. Right, so that's more. not just the gesso I'm looking right. at. Right, right. That's what I, I was yeah. just wondering about. Now, for a, while, for a little while, I was painting them white, so I would start out with a white ground. Right, yeah. And now I just use, as you'll see, as we progress here. So when I'm seeing white on something, it's applied white. It's not just... There are exceptions. There may be some exceptions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I am kind of sensitive to it because I do want paint to be well, I would on too. the surface. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that lower right one, that is all paint. There's yeah. All, there, it might be a spot that I missed. It oh, just. I know, I get, I know. But, <laughs> but you're not deliberately just leaving the ground out. It isn't like watercolor. Correct. Well, I have, I used to. Yeah. And I would just leave it. I like the stark white of the gesso. Yeah. I, and it's I interesting how very much I like the black in this lower painting, and how the black in the upper one disturbs me. Isn't that the weirdest thing? It's just the black. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, there's something about the black in this painting that like really works for me. There's something about the black in that one that doesn't. It's like, like the chroma or the uh, I don't know. the color is you know squishy. It's, 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 it's enveloped by those greens, which probably don't. It's, it's, yeah, I, who knows? You know, because I really like that painting a lot. I like the painting a lot. Maybe it's a good thing that the black bothers me. You know, sometimes when we're bothered by things, it's significant. It isn't necessarily negative. I know that's why I paint. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Some people say, "Oh, oh no, that's that bo that's disturbing or that bothers me." That can be very good. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. right. Oh. Yeah, and and like when I get to a certain point on a painting, yeah. you know, I've, I've tried to work the whole surface so that everything is integral and everything is necessary yeah. to affect something else. Like if I, I think I, I tell myself if I blocked out part of that, it would be a different painting. And it, the obvious thing would be like this little piece of red right here. If you took this away, um, it, yeah. it totally transforms the painting. Yeah, no, no, no. And then no, if you take the black away, it also does something different to the yeah. painting. Yeah. Um, but I'd like it to be so that all of these muddled and colors are yeah. equally significant. Yeah. Um, oh no, you can't. You can't take the red out. Oh no, don't do that. No. I don't think you can take anything out. Yeah, that's. It, it yeah. might be the smudging. Um, I'm used to seeing things. Fan, do you know what I mean by yeah. fan? Yeah, yeah. Blended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fan, yep. and I and you're not fanning those. You're sm uh, what do you, How are you smudging them? Like with a paper towel or? Oh, uh, with a palette knife. Okay. With, oh, just with a palette knife. Yeah. Or or a um, a wide palette knife. This is all acrylic, right? Yeah, oil. Oh yeah. Oh, this is oil. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you have the option of fanning it all out if you want. Do you, do you yeah. have any little fanning brushes? Fine, yeah. little fanning brushes. So you have that, I thought it was acrylic paint. I can't tell by looking at it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I that is oil down there? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I am surprised. It has a very, um, uh, it has a very dull look, you know. Yeah. Uh, but you know something, now I do see some glistening, but now that I'm looking kind of carefully, yeah, a little glistening. The, the yeah. linseed oil is. Oh, uh, yeah. see, now if I change my position in the yeah. light, I can see that, yeah, yeah. But fanning, because um, uh, I'm used to fanning all kinds of things, like marbleizing things, right. you know. Those brushes are expensive, I'll tell you. Yeah, and so is the paint. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because, you know, red is my favorite color. It always has been since I was a kid. Oh, I absolutely adore that painting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Here's one that might have a little bit more blend. Yeah. So he's diving into the swimming pool. <laughs> um, no, it just looks like a pool of water down there. And of course, I can see the human, the nude. So <laughs> he must be diving. He must be diving into the pool. But it also looks like there's something going on in the background, like uh, like horses racing by or something. So I'm just, I'm just. This is, yeah. These are the kinds of things you see when you look exactly. At the picture, yeah, and, it's, and I'm just listening because you know. I like to hear what your right, first yeah. impressions are. Yeah, well, I see the human form, yeah. probably male, and um, it, it uh, looks like a pool of water. Yes, down there. And then right in the center, underneath the arm, right in the center, it almost looks like in miniature. It looks like like two Indians galloping by on horseback. Yeah, and I can actually now that you said that, I can actually see te <coughs> teepees made like regular. Right yes, I see that too. Yeah, yeah I saw that. So, yeah. so it's a western sea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So. But this little this little guy down here on the left is that's a very beautiful composition. That is it's exquisite, it's balanced, it's um, I don't need to I don't need to find narrative in things. It's just that sometimes you look at something and it's it's just so obviously there. Yes. You know. Yeah. I'm not looking really looking for narrative. Yeah. I don't need it. But that I don't this I don't see any narrative in that that's at all. I just love to look at it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't really develop a story. No. I don't and that, and I think that's where I am right now. Some mm. of my stuff is a little bit of figurative. I, I was staying yeah. away from figurative, and right. then, but I keep going back and forth, and yeah. it's I kind of work off an impulse. Yeah. If I feel like I want to do it, then I'll I'll do the figurative. Well, then it, what what's easiest for me, like in in the creative process, if I I remind myself consciously from time to time that it is not about me. It's not about the poet. It's about the work. It's like about the painting or the poem, about the, the object that you're creating, and that's what it's about, you know. So, so in other words, I is the poet. Well, you know, I will, I'll have all kinds of ideas, and I'll never let myself just unconsciously work. I mean, the point is to let myself unconsciously work and make it. But of course, my tendency is to keep injecting yes. myself consciously into it. Yeah, yeah, and, and ego. And of course, it just like wrecks it every time. Yeah, yeah. And so, it, so just yeah. let. So if you feel like if something representational is developing, well, then that's what's developing. And 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 if nothing representational is developing, well, nothing is. And just like leave it alone. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I usually start either with a figure or I start with no figure, and I yeah. don't really yeah. introduce a figure into it later. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. Yeah, that's exactly what I would think. Yeah. Some of these paintings you've got to get out for the public to see. Oh, are you putting them online? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'm sharing them on Instagram and uh, um, Facebook. Ooh, now that's very different, Kevin. Wow. Ooh. I do like your small paintings, don't I? Isn't that interesting? Huh? Now that the one on the left, you know, it, it's spatial. Um, mm. It looks like you could be looking into an interior of a building or something. But what I was doing was I was just trying to get some paint on the surface, yeah. and I was trying to get it ready to do a painting. And I had these great colors already mixed up on my palette. And I just went like this to get it going. And then all of a sudden I was like, whoa, is this a painting or what? And, and I don't know still, it's like, but I, 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 whenever I look at it, I'm like, I don't know what I can do to this to make it more um, an expression of something that I feel. Oh, so. see, that's interesting. You see, it could be like looking inside the window of the building. Yeah. And I, when I first saw that painting, I, one of the first things I thought of was like, I've gone to the window and I'm looking out at the window. Oh. At Apocalypse. 
Okay. <laughs> like the world's on fire. Yeah, okay. I was looking out the window. Wait, you're talking about the one on the left? That one there on the left, the big yeah. one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, which one were you talking that about? That one. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was thinking, I was gone to the window and I'm looking out because the chaos is happening. Like apocalypse is so, you know, the world is just gone. And I'm looking out at it. Isn't that interesting? It, it, yeah. could, it could actually be an October sunrise. Yeah, there's something about it that's like, well, of course, the red's on fire. The yeah. green of nature yeah. and the red of fire. Yeah. yeah that's in there. You know, I, um, yeah, I mean, I like it. I like it. I like the coloring. I like the fact I don't really need a narrative, which is really nice, you know. This, uh, this little guy on the right, I guess that I do. I'm not too sure if I have a preference for small paintings. I never thought that I did. Um, or if, um, I don't know, the unity of composition may be uh, more evident in the small ones, but that's very, very nice up there. That's, um, that, that's, that's, that's in constant motion. You know, wherever you look at that picture, your yeah. eye wants to go, your eye wants to keep traveling, you know. It's, yeah. It's like, it's, like um, it's, it's sort of like a study in two-dimensional motion. Yeah, you know, your eye just wants to keep traveling and traveling and traveling and traveling. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that one, I think the lower one was more of an express. It was, I, I started to realize that the painting, it felt impressed. It was like I was yeah, taking these yeah, elements and I was yeah. squeezing them together. And, yeah. and that was my, my inspiration, yeah, I think. Yeah. And that one up there, I was just kind of taking my time, enjoying watching what happened. I started brushing just dark brush strokes on it, and then I came back with whites and, and yeah, cool. yeah. I just kind of and I thought you know what I'm just going to enjoy this and yeah. and not feel like I'm desperate. It looks like it. something pulsating and wanting to separate. Yeah. But it, it hasn't separated yet. Like yeah. it might yeah. you, you, it's all it's it, moving. It, 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 it might separate. It's yeah. almost like the components might all flow right. it's off like the margin. Could, yeah, it could be like the intestines of the a yeah. deer that a hunter just yeah, put on the right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. It really it's very organic. Yeah. Very yeah. alive. Yeah. The, the, this small picture down here, the, I think that there is something about your small paintings where uh, the, the way you've organized it, um, maybe it's just because um, you're, you're doing a lot of painting right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like a certain amount of just like practice painting. You don't mean to be practicing, you're painting, but like it's like the more paintings you do, the, you know, the more your, your methods and your techniques and your sense of organization and structure and composition and values and that's all, that's all stuff. So you're not consciously aware of it probably, but a lot of that is keeps shifting and changing yes. and yeah, yeah, you're yeah. trying out all kinds of different things and yeah. you don't have to stop and think about everything. You're just kind of like doing it. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and I think that you probably, one of the first things that you've mastered, I think, is probably your sense of balance and organization with small paintings. It's like they're almost like always successful. I think all your small paintings are pretty successful. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But a lot of the paintings that you were originally doing 20, 15, and 10 years ago were small paintings. Yeah. You've yeah. done a great many small paintings. Yeah. And so naturally, you've kind of like mastered some of the things that go into right. the way you do small paintings. Yeah. It's only just. And then w and yeah. within that, then I try to push them. Yeah. Them. yeah. You know, and I, and yeah. I, I want something to feel quite maybe yeah. not perfect or right, you know? And so. Well, I don't know. Well, I got some. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. These are all dry enough to handle. Well, the, the couple. This one is. Well, not. be careful. Don't smudge your ruin your paintings. Oh wow. Now that's a good example to put those two side by side. Yeah. Because one of the, uh, yeah, I can see one of the things that I'm evaluating now. You don't mind my talking on so much, do you? No, no, no. that's why, no, uh, I, no, I was hoping you would. I don't mean to be a critic. Yeah, no, I, no. What I, I'm mostly expressing what I like and don't like, you know. But, um, you know, this is a very good example, those two paintings side by side. One of the things that I'm finding that, 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 that I'm keen about in your paintings yeah is things that are, that are sharper defined. Uh -huh. See, I really obviously prefer the one on the left to the uh -huh. one on the right. Uh -huh. The one on the left is much more, uh, it's crisper, there's more definition. The one on the right is, is uh, what's the word, you, what, what do you call Looser, that? Looser, maybe? Looser, it's, it's um, Less defined, more vague. Vague and, yeah, um, uh, of course, uh, smudgy and vague and 
gauzy and all that kind of stuff, you know. And the one on the left is crisper, sharper, more defined. Um, I don't prefer one palette of colors to the other, so it's not that. It's not because I like these colors and don't like those. Yeah. It's like I respond more to things that are crisper, sharper, more defined, more organized. Um, even organized chaos, you know. Yeah. But, um, and, and things that, things that are, um, it's why I, only watercolors that are very good have any appeal to me. You know what I'm saying? I have seen a million dreadful watercolors that yeah. look all bleedy and smudgy and you know, they are just awful. They may not really be awful. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm not an art critic. Yeah. But from my point of view, they're dreadful. <laughs> but once in a while, there'll be an outstanding watercolor. Yeah. And it's and what's outstanding about it is that it's sharp and clear and has definition and balance and, and there's none of these muddy, weird... Yeah, yeah, everything's translucent yeah, and beautiful. Right, you know. Yeah, Homer's watercolor. Yeah, like right. That. Watercolor, when it's really done well, is very beautiful. <laughs> or it's awful. Yeah. There's like no middle ground. And see, this is the kind of thing I often see in watercolor where people have smudged and smeared things and it's not, it's not it, the, the definition and the crispness or whatever lost. is lost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, interestingly, what, what the, the, the one that we're talking about kind of was a breaking point for me because it, if, in the way that I'm looking at it, it's a bigger painting than the one on the left. Oh, it actually yes. is, it's all, it, it's, it, it goes beyond itself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And when I was working on it, when I arrived at that point, I was like, whoa, this painting is bigger than the actual canvas. Somehow, I'm not sure how I can seven. see that. I can see exactly what you mean by that. And for yeah. me, now, this one to the left is a little bit more, it's more contrived, and I feel like I go into the painting, you know? And then, so I've been working on that with that one up there, I kind of go into the painting. Yeah, no, no, I see what you're saying. It's yeah. almost a, almost as if there was a funnel there, and it was yeah. drawing everything onto yeah. the canvas. Yeah. Whereas that one there is yeah. that this is a, something the behind surface. it that's gushing. Yeah. And Pushing right. it outward. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Oh, that's very clear. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it so it took me by surprise. I was like, whoa. Yeah. I was, yeah. and that was a, it was it was a it was a, when I was working on it, nothing was happening. Then all of a sudden, I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna let I'm gonna stop thinking and respond to the colors. And then when I was doing that, it, for me there was this, this experience. It was like, whoa, I, this is unprecedented. So I I felt like I reached a little bit farther than I would have on these other ones. And I, I made it to another plateau. Now, yeah. what happens is, how do I develop that if I do, if I decide to? That's what, that's what, and that's what I was wondering. What, yeah. You know, right. Yeah. It's obviously just part of a process. It's a stage of a process. Yeah. What, what you know, it's evolving. Right. Because, like, yeah, I could right. take some of those sharp elements right. and put them in this one. Yeah. But it would betray the painting. Right. You yeah. know, so. No, I, that that has to evolve. You know, that, that isn't going to evolve by 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 robbing things from. And, and plugging them in. Right. No, that's not. But how that's that is that is how a craft is developed, which I do try to stay away from. Yeah, you don't want. Yeah, yeah. this isn't craft. Yeah. Now, I'm, uh, this is a common house fly. Yeah, I yeah. fly, but it, it, of all things, it's driving me nuts. Just a fly. Can you imagine? Yeah. Okay. You know, if it was a deer fly, um, I would be frantic. I really don't know what people who do really know about art, you know, the people who really know about it, um, you know, what they would make of some of it. I just really don't know. I'm, I, I feel competent to judge um, poetry and even prose, in, like in yeah. literature. I don't feel particularly competent in the plastic arts, you know. Well, it, it is really, it's so subjective and it's also objective and... Yeah, but there is, there is such a thing as like what's good art and what's junk, you know. No, that's good art. That is good art. And I usually do not think, like things that are cubist and that, that are geometrical. And that is a very, very fine. That's very nice. Oh, see, here you go again, Kevin. Every single one of your small paintings is a winner. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. But of course, that's taste, you know. That's just my personal taste. See, I wouldn't hesitate to e have either of those two paintings hanging on a wall in my house. <laughs> See what I'm saying? These two down here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, to me, they're both very, very, very finished and, and very, very fine. 
And the one on the top, of course, harks back to that other category of work you Yeah, now that one on the top is not finished, but it yeah. was after the one that we were talking yeah. about has the, ma the muddy chaos. Yes, yeah, right, yeah. So that's where I... Oh, yeah, 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 right. I can see yeah, that. Yeah. And I can see that that painting, the, the one up on the easel, yeah. is part of like a sequence with the one we were just looking right, at. Yeah. I can see where it's going. Yeah. yeah. And that the, and what the, it's not even finished yet. Right. And yeah. I can see yeah. where it's going. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Um, do you know... Do you, I used to use the word anchors a lot. You know, talking yeah. about paintings and things. Yeah. It's like they they have to. Um, they're not floating out in the ether, you know. They exist as tangible objects in the real world. Mm -hmm. They have to somehow. Um, they have to be anchored to the reality that we live in. You, you know what I mean? It, yeah, and that's that's the artist's job. Right. Exactly. And see that that painting there, I feel, is much more anchored. I feel that it is. Um, and for something that's, for me at uh, least, it's totally non-representational. I can't, I don't have any narrative for that. I could come up with one if I studied it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, I yeah. wanted to. Yeah, yeah. But I don't need to, and, and it doesn't strike me as having a narrative. And it's, but it feels more, um, more integrated than the one we were looking at yeah, before. Yeah. Right. And like you said, it's not finished yet. Yeah. I would have, I would have hope for that painting. Yeah. And I want that one to like glisten with color. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's kind of the colors are still muddy. Yeah, you haven't got there. And I haven't figured. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. But see these two pictures down here, and I, you know, something I, uh, for years, I had almost an aversion to a lot of modern paintings with yeah. geometrics and stuff. You know, like Matisse. Yeah. Well, yeah, like Matisse, and even some of Miro's. Okay, paintings. so it's cubism. Yeah, I mean, I just like to me, like you know, you paint a stripe on a canvas and you hang it on the wall, and you say, "This is great art." You know? Oh, like Duchamp. Uh, yeah, like many of them. Yeah, you yeah. Know, go to the go to Bomer and you'll see them all the time. Yeah. But you know that for some reason that painting down there has genuine appeal, for them, serious appeal, and um, and that's it's it's geometric for lack of a better word. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's rectangles and squares. Yeah, and and that's that was you know that's like way out of my comfort zone. Um, yeah, but it's very beautiful. So yeah, so I you know I started just. Yeah. putting little shapes here and there and then yeah. and then I just kind of I responded to those shapes and, yeah. and I came up with that and I thought you know yeah. this is a statement and so I, I didn't try to fight it and say this no is and statement. also I think one of the things that redeems it is that you have not defined mm -hmm. um, the shapes yeah. yeah you know what I mean some people have this a need I mean they'd be in there yeah. painting that with a goddamn ruler you know? well you know what that the inspiration for that and I have another one is was I was on uh, Oak Street in Portland one day and I looked down the alley and, uh, ah. and, I, and I saw these buildings, but and I, I have yeah. a little sketch pad in my back pocket, and I sketched yeah. it. Yeah. And as I was working on it, it was I had that that was the impression of that moment was what I was after, but I didn't use any reference. Right. And I didn't I didn't add perspective. I kept everything sort of flat so that it was masking mm -hmm. what you know uh, the landscape and and, right. just bent, yeah. and I go for the feeling of what I the overall. So it's sensation. all it's, it it really was about the uh, what's the word I want? It was about. It was about the masses of things and the weights of things Maybe. and the size, the impression the that I got from it. sizes of yes. things. Yes, yeah, relative sizes. Right, relative yeah. sizes of yeah. things and right. I yeah. can see that. Yeah. But I, but I avoided the street. You know, making perspective. I think if I'd added perspective, it would have. Oh no, I see a, quite a lot of perspective. Yeah, 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 but it's more like a Japanese yeah. perspective. Right? I'm surprised at how much depth that has. Well, I think it's something because of the geometric. Color. Don't you? Well, so what you've done. I don't yeah. know what you've done. You're the yeah. painter, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I can but there but I see real perspective and depth. I see a foreground, a background, a middle ground. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I see perspective in it, you yeah. know. Which surprises me. Yeah. You know. But I, but it's I I don't know when I first saw you set it on the ground. My but of course these are just opinions and personal feelings and, and well, that's and all we have. It's, yeah, it's my well, no. I really believe that I really do believe in objective criteria. <sighs> I believe there are people who do know and understand art and who and who really, really do know when something is good and when something is junk. I think great artists don't. No, I don't think the artists necessarily do. Mm. Oh, I agree with that, yeah. I think that's that's part of the appeal for me too, is is that Right. We don't understand, I don't understand it. And the more that I don't understand it, the more it appeals to me. Now, one of the things that there's always tension, I, I'm guessing, but, but you know, if you want to show your work to the public or sell your work or whatever, then the artist is always conflicted because he wants to make pictures that are beautiful, that people enjoy looking at. They might even buy them and hang them on the walls in their houses. But sometimes 
that's not the best act. And sometimes...